sir we will start sir shall we start so yes sir okay uh, i'll just uh, good evening one and all uh, welcome to 87th uh, uh, talk of weekly webinar series hosted by ipcc malabar publication uh, in association with ipcc malabar hub and uh, today's topic is uh, recent trends in biomedical lambda actually we are supposed to have dr kartikeyan from vellore institute of technology uh because of uh, official uh, duty assigned in the last moment he couldn't join but uh, he didn't uh, uh, fit from the talk but instead of that uh, he has assigned or allotted his student who is doing phd in uh, under him uh, who is none other than uh, mr kangeyan uh, so we will have session from kangeyan today so before going into the topic Uh, I, let me introduce uh, our uh, speaker uh, to the audience. So, Mr. Kankayan uh, received his BE degree in Electronics and Communication Engineering from Palavan College of Engineering, Kanjipuram, in 2005. Then he did his Masters in Communication System uh, from Sona College of Technology uh, in the year 2007. Currently, he is pursuing uh, his full-time PhD. uh at vit university uh his research is in implantable antennas for biomedical application so he previously he was working as professor in electronics and communication engineering at pellavan college of engineering kanjipuram uh from 2008 to 2017 uh then he worked as assistant professor in electronics and communication engineering in adi college of engineering and technology at walgabad from november 2017 to july 2020 this area of specialization is antenna design microwave engineering and uh, multiple input multiple output systems so without any further ado i invite uh, mr kangeyan uh, to this uh, weekly webinar series over to you sir thank you sir thank you for the brief introduction sir i'm going to on the present year and today we are going to discuss about the recent development and the challenges in biomedical antennas session is content like introduction and broad area of implantable antennas and biomedical applications in implantable and what are the frequency bands we are using implantable antennas and uh, different designing challenges for implantable antennas we have a Well, we are going to design an implantable antenna. We are facing a different challenges. The challenges are to be overcome by this uh, uh, different uh, technique. How the challenges has been overcome? Other different methodologies we are using. Finally, we are working on our uh, antenna. Along with that antenna, we are obtaining results. Based on that result, we are getting a measurement. So we are discuss the results and the what we are obtained in the design factor. and before we are going for our implantable uh, this presentation i would like to thank my guide mr dr m kartikeyan associate professor at vellore institute of technology in vellore it is opportunity to take this session i thank him the introduction of uh, implantable or uh, implantables so in first case we should consider the developing antennas for body centric communication Uh, because in recent days uh, huge uh, development is going on for implantable antennas uh, based on the body centric communications they can be categorized already we know that is rd communication and uh, in body communication on body communications so if you are go for off body communication that communication will take place the external networking if you go for uh, in body communications using implantable devices like uh, in between uh, within that within a human body we are placing our antenna so from that human body from that antenna we can transfer information to the external devices it is called a in body communication that could be comes con, com, comes under the category of implantable device if you go for wearable it comes under a hard body communications so in this on body communications over the body we can measure some uh, parameter uh, required parameters we can measure 
So these are all uh, comes under the category of uh, body centric communications. Why we are go for uh, body centric communication is because of it is a compact uh, uh, biomedical applications. We can uh, share information effectively by using any on body or in body communications. Especially in this uh, presentations, we are going to concentrate more and more on implantable devices and implantable antenna design. So in this case, in body centric communications, we are going to enhance the quality of life. And also to increase the connectivity with uh, improved sensing of uh, data or sensing of uh, signal. And also we can uh, monitor the uh, huge number of uh, parameters capable to monitor the data from the patients. This uh, wireless body combination is a key component for uh, implantable antenna, which can also interfere in a man and machines to provide a seamless wireless connectivity. Uh, that is an, uh, uh, body centric uh, communication that in that category we are mostly concentrating on in body communications in that case we are go for uh, biotelemetry applications in this biotelemetry applications we can share information uh, of our downlink and uplink channels by using the down and uplink vice versa we can share our measured information of a parameter of our uh, patient to the external devices like uh, any doctors or any hospitals from that hospitals and doctors we can receive the information to the patient that will be comes under the category of biotelemetry applications and implantable so mostly implantable we are working on uh, different tests we are using like in general they are using a ff4 substrate now whereas most of the implantable antenna designs comes under in a roger substrate especially in roger substrate the dielectric constant is getting higher dielectric constants and uh, miniaturizing the size of the antenna to obtain the maximum return loss and also we can get the radiation pattern and the gain in the desired direction. So once if you are designed the uh, implantable antenna, there is some restrictions and challenges has been uh, provided, uh, has been there. That for, for first one, we have to consider for portability. So if you are designing an antenna, an implantable antenna, the portability is a major challenging issues. And the computing uh, like uh, size, that miniaturization of the size, it should be very uh, compact. And also we have to design the frequency. If we go for uh, a design, we should have a frequency band. We have unlicensed frequency bands that uh, frequency band we should sell because mostly the implantable antenna supported low frequency. And from now at this, we are working. So we can work on uh, ISM frequency band we uh, consider what are the frequency that are available for designing an implantable antenna and also we can find the with to increase the radiation efficiency and finally we should consider the SAR value the specific absorption rate that is the safety of most important for of implantable antenna also here in the dielectrically small antenna because it uh, the size will be very less the directivity that is a uh, length of the antenna should be satisfied always in lambda by two because of the dipole and monopole we can consider that small and that implantable antennas and wearable antennas come under the category of small antennas in first part area of antennas if you are before you go for implantable antennas uh, there is some area uh, of uh, applications in uh, implantable. Like uh, if you are uh, using any Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, yeah. this is actually disconnecting. Okay, okay. You can share your slides. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Okay. Okay. It's visible, sir. Slide is visible. Yes. Yes, sir. I can continue. Sir. Yeah, yeah, you can continue. Okay. So, 
research areas are related to implant implant nas like a retinal implant a bone implant a cochlear implant a cardiac pacemakers and the capsule endoscopy and the endonuclear pressure monitoring so especially uh, these applications are mainly required for real patients that will be applicable that will be analyzed or uh, designing the antenna by using uh, implantable applications and the stimulators we are using are nerve stimulators bladder stimulators heart rate stimulator and brain stimulator and defibrillators and also leadless pacemakers in nowadays a leadless pacemaker is plays an important role because of uh, measuring the heart rate and also we can uh, consider a retinal implant so here the retinal implant uh, focus uh, the retinal retinal implant focus will also we, we have consider so once if you are uh, analyzing these applications the data telemetry is plays a major role so once the data telemetry applications we have then we can easily uh, provide a uh, different applications over the implantable structures once if you have any uh, frequency ranges it depends on that uh, mid radio frequency range or iso frequency ranges or any uh, low in terms of megahertz frequency ranges we can working all these applications and in special and uh, cardiac pacemakers they are used for uh, capable of <laughs> implementing a diagnostic of uh, electromagnetic signal signal they can uh, categorizing the uh, natural pacemaker and artificial pacemakers the heart activities and adjusting uh, pace rate can be performed by the uh, pacemakers uh, they have uh, uh, multi programmed and uh, dual chamber intrastic uh, art activities they can also have uh, a data collection and a data telemetry process they can tune the multi uh, signals or multi band they can also have a uh, detect and uh, investigate the heart rate and heart beat of the persons to find out the a normal or abnormal pulse or abnormal rate of the heart rate if any uh, irregularities or any abnormal heart rate has been detected they can uh, stimulate some electrical stimulator they can have uh, artificial pacemakers they can embedded in the system they can also working on that uh, real time applications so it has uh, both implemented in both software and hardware capabilities um, general the cardiac pacemakers have uh, three major functionalities like uh, uh, source of electrical uh, systems they can uh, electrical pulse generators and also the uh, lead systems so these are all the major uh, applications or major uh, key points we have consider for uh, cardiac pacemakers so in biomedical communication uh, types we have uh, invasive and non invasive communications in biomedical now we are concentrated more and more on implantable which is comes under the category of invasive communication systems if that is uh, we are designing the antenna we are going to place the antenna inside the body that is comes under the invasive communication system so go for non invasive communication system that is com uh, comes under the category of wearable application and wearable antenna <laughs> so why we are more and more concentrating on implantable medical electronic device means because it is essential for biomedical related applications and also have a notable disease nowadays we have a notable disease are available like abnormal rhythm of heart rate that can be performed by the pacemakers that movement of disorders can be accessed by the stimulators and also chronic back pains we can also identified and respiratory defications can also be identified and urinal and feel inconvenience problems can also be identified and deafness due to sensory neural hearing losses and blindness caused by the photoreceptors and degeneration in the retinal part these are all the notable disease nowadays we are having that can be implement that can be sort out or solved by using the different implantable antenna applications in general the antennas for biomedical application they are categorized into four types like electrically small antennas resonant antennas broadband antennas and aperture antennas if you go for electrically small antennas we are consider consider for uh, wire antennas and a dipole antenna in terms of uh, uh, dipole and wire antennas that is the size will be electrically very small so they can be comes under the category of a biomedical application antenna if you go for resonant antenna it has a lambda by 2 antenna that is half a dipole antenna especially microstrip patch antennas are working as an resonant antenna 
they can also designed and uh, implemented for uh, access the implantable applications if you go for high frequencies like a broadband antenna spiral antenna and helical antennas we are using so by using that spiral and helical antennas we can get a maximum bandwidth and gain instead of uh, resonant antennas and electrically small antenna and finally we go for aperture antenna in the standard aperture antennas we are using horn antenna and also reflector antenna that can use the purpose of uh, transmitting and receiving the testing applications we are using for uh, aperture antennas in first we have to consider a biotelemetry applications once the uh, biotelemetry applications is mainly used for uh, measuring the biological parameter over the particular distance so uh, the biotelemetry is always having a uh, uh, that is a transmission of a measured information or a measured parameter of the patient that can be uh, shared to the external device to the uh, patient inside the patient or uh, vice versa from the patient to external device and external device to patient that's why we are using a hop link and a down link uh, data telemetry systems so here we have a two types of data telemetry like active uh, telemetry and passive telemetry if you are uh, implementing a active telemetry just you have effective data transfer in both the directions like uh, from uh, external devices to the patient and the patient to the external devices over the long distance that can use a, a one more uh, onboard battery that onboard batteries can capable to uh, uh, share and uh, exchanging of information from the bidirectional actually the radio transmitter uh, employed for uh, both analog as well as in digital modulations or a carrier signal the size will be uh, very bulky so if you are using that uh, active so the lifetime will be uh, very less so that's why we go for a passive telemetry uh, classes in this case uh, we can decrease the distance Inter instead of uh, long distance we can uh, decrease the distance up to which communication is effective if you are uh, choose any uh, battery free operational or a battery free operation of uh, frequency that can provide a uh, unrestriction time of uh, operations if you have you can take uh, you no need to present on the active mode you can easily share and you can easily uh, provide uh, any particular information of exchanging from the external devices to the patient and the patient to the external devices that's why it is called as a batteryless operation it occupies uh, a low space because it is in a passive telemetry the passive system doesn't have any particular uh, uh, bulky size it can increase the occupied space we can move and we can fix anywhere in that particular area and the size we uh, provide is very very uh, less and also can provide the on chip signal processing there is a in active we have a on board battery whereas in case of passive we have a on chip signal processing because of a less on chip signal processing if you have in that case we can share the information very effectively man so these are all the in this diagram we have a different uh, psychological bias signal and uh, sensors that can able to sense the information and uh, share the information so first one they have used a psychological bias signal and sensors by physical signals we can measure uh, pressures and motion and uh, we can also measure the vibrate and also tax we can also find so all the parameters we can able to uh, sense if you go for a thermal signal we can measure a fever and hypotherapy if you go for a electro psychological signals like a brain wave activities and the cardiac activities and the muscle movement we can also uh, measure and monitor by using biotelemetry and also uh, from that uh, human we can uh, have a user interactive systems they can access from the uh, remote medical services they can also have a, a self diagnostics they can also our home healthcare applications and also we can provide the feedback from patient Uh, to doctors or uh, hospital from the hospital to the doctors they can uh, easily exchange the informations this biotelemetry uh, is mainly concentrated uh, more and more on uh, both active as well as in the passive cases in in case of uh, uplink frequency and the downlink frequency we can use uh, that uh, biotelemetry applications in this biotelemetry all the measured parameters can be analyzed based on that parameters we can use to uh, transmit for that purpose we are using a different types of uh, modulator modulation schemes like uh, if you are using a data telemetry in a downlink frequency 
we have to more consider an uh, uh, digital modulation scheme like uh, ASK amplitude shift keying modulator, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying modulators. Because the data to be transmitted into implantable devices, from the implantable devices to the external devices, uh, mutually we can uh, share the information. Why we are using a digital modulation schemes? Because of uh, data transmission and the low transmission rate. A bit rate will have the limited uh, bit rate. That's why we are using for uh, uh, digital modulation schemes in uh, data telemetry downlink systems. If you go for uh, uh, data telemetry in uplink system, because if you have any uh, exchanging of information, we should consider both the downlink and uplink frequencies. So here, if you are using a uplink frequency, that also we have to consider like a load shift keying modulator, axillary carrier load shift keying modulator. So these two uh, keying modulators are plays a major role to uh, sharing the information or uh, contactless transmission of patient from the external devices to the user information. These are all the uh, measured, uh, these are all the signals they can able to measure. And nowadays, we have a different implantable and ingestible medical devices. In uh, different manufacturers, like uh, Medtronic is a, a key manufacturer to manufacture all the implantable devices. And also, uh, given imaging uh, manufacturers, and, uh, uh, and second site for implantable and second site for uh, retinal implantable applications and the nuclear freedom systems for a drug delivery and Medtronic is mostly considered for uh, insulin pump and also they're considered for a uh, different nerve stimulators and also they're using a neuro stimulators and uh, providing the glucose monitoring and the blood pressure monitoring and uh, nuclear of freedom they are Manufacturer, they are concentrated more on a cochlear implant. These are all uh, devices available at present in market. This comes under the category of uh, implantable and ingestible medical devices that can be used to measure all the uh, human being parameters like uh, blood pressure and uh, glucose monitoring and cochlear implant parameters and neurostimulator values and retinal and uh, we can choose in a second site uh, by using the retinal. The retinal, um, retina is most important for your uh, human eye. So they can also uh, implementing in implantable devices. These are all the available devices in the market. Once if you are applying for a telemetry system, that, that should be a treating and a diagnostic process. So once if you are identifying any diagnostic process, that's first we have to identify the human body tissue. That human body tissue must have some dielectric constant because depends on the age group, we have a different dielectric constant. That particular human body tissues can be uh, applied for uh, malignant tissues because of the malignant tissues can be determined. With that malignant tissues only, we have some dielectric constant. From that identified malignant tissues, we can apply it for the information about the malignant tissues they can be extracted from the signal received from the antenna because of that antenna will be placed inside the uh, inside the body that can collect the information from that information that information can be shared to the external devices that the human body is complicated structure because of uh, they have uh, different uh, materials and a different uh, dielectric uh, constant so for that uh, after getting that uh, information that information has to be transfer over that particular destination, the information retrieved will be analyzed using that conductivity and the dielectric constant. So this conduct, dielectric constant and the conductivity plays an important role for uh, diagnostic process because once if you are identifying any human body and that particular tissue will have a dielectric values, from the dielectric values, we should identify the malignant tissue. From that malignant tissue, we have to collect all the information and then process and then will be analyzed by by using that uh, conductivity and uh, dielectric constant of your diagnostic process. Once if you are uh, design any implantable antenna, we should work on that uh, different phantom models, like human phantom models. A general, a phantom is an artificial simulated biological body, right? So it has been extensively used for medical researches and the effect of electromagnetic radiations. We have a different phantom structures based on that uh, age groups, based on the male and female. So all the body phantom models, which is available in a CST software, so we can easily uh, get it from that 
phantom model in the software and then we can analyze into that uh, for a designed antenna so here we have uh, once if you go for any phantom design so in that particular uh, human body phantoms we should consider for uh, super state applications and also for uh, power penetrations once if you are choosing any super state that super state is always act as in a bio comfortable comfortability so for bio comfortability devices for a bio comfortable substrate uh, over that substrate over the patch we are placing a super state that super state will act as a bio comfort comfortable material because that will uh, reduce the reflection and also it reduce the losses from the radiation so if you are uh, taking any implantable antenna we have selected the phantom models the phantom models can be categorized into different types and different category based on that uh, criteria in terms of frequency or in terms of selection of tissue that human body phantoms plays an important role which is designing implantable antenna and or any radiating elements near or on the particular human body so in general uh, they are categorizing uh, types of tissue phantoms based on the two different criteria for for example high water content tissues and low water content tissues if you go for high water content tissues it has a low permittivity and low losses that is the example of uh, brain and uh, skin and muscles these three comes under the category of high water content tissues it has a low permittivity and low losses if you go for uh, low water content tissues they have higher permittivity and high losses uh, for example we are taking a bone and fat these are all the major category of uh, tissue phantoms which is available in uh, cst software and available in all the phantom designs if you go for uh, class or if you for solid state or any uh, class of uh, phantoms in common we are using three uh, combinations like a liquid or a gel or any solid so by using this always we are using a, a gel by uh, combining the different uh, combinations of uh, dielectric and also we get the uh, different uh, preparation of mimicking gels we can prepare so in general a phantom models is always uh, supported uh, to identify the designing implantable antenna for biological characteristics this three is a major uh, class b so like liquid semi solid or solid so here based on the content of water they can uh, categorizing that phantom models for our uh, design we are using a human body phantom mimicking gels we have prepared different mimicking gels with different uh, uh, permittivity uh, characteristics and the conductivity of the uh, phantom so in general we are using a single layer phantom or a triple layer phantom so only a skin phantoms we are using uh, for that skin uh, we are we have to uh, select like a preparation of a gel by combining a deionized water and uh, salt and sugar we prepare uh, one uh, form of a gel that will be identified uh, by uh, that will be combined by the different percentage of combinations to get the dielectric permittivity for skin tissue we have a rectangular shape of a container that prepare a gel with ingredients of dna to water the sugar sugar and salt uh, we are getting the dielectric concentration is called 38 for skin tissue if you go for skull same gel we are getting and same water salt and also we are getting a tmed and uh, ammonium per sulfate we are uh, mixing in a different percentage with a dielectric permittivity is equal to 28 and similarly uh, rat tissue we are taking that have uh, deionized water and ggbs and tritonium x100 we are combining as ingredients so they they are using that uh, epsilon r is equal to 45 like that we can have a three layer models like a skin fat and muscles same the rectangular containers we are taking we are uh, mixing with a different uh, percentage how we are uh, mixing this deionized water sugar and uh, all those things we have uh, we have some uh, dielectric uh, permittivity and uh, the the rsb for uh, skin already we know that is a 38 if you go for a fat the epsilon r is equal to 5.28 and the muscles if you have uh, combinations of fluid deionized water and sugar and salt we get the 52.7 these are all the uh, different uh, phantom mimicking gels prepared for uh, designing a implantable antenna so here this is a, a combination of percentage of uh, preparation of human skin as a mimicking gel like uh, for our uh, deionized to water we are taking as a 41.49% and sugar we are taking as a 56.18 and salt will be taking as a 2.33 it will act as a 
skin that epsilon r is equal to 38 so like that you are combining uh, different deionized uh, deionized water as a percentage of 2.9 Salt is a percentage of 0.1 and the vegetable oils we are using the 30 and the florals we are using 67 is act as a fat. He is getting uh, that epsilon R values will be exactly represented in that human skin. Similarly, we are using the muscles. They can also have a deionized water percentage of 59.5 and sugar percentage 40 and that uh, salt NaCl we are getting the 0, 0 0.5. This is a preparation of human mimicking gels. If you have any uh, uh, Pork tissues, the pork tissue also we can uh, test by using the implantable antenna. So it can uh, access and it can directly measure the dual band as well as we can directly measure what we are uh, obtained in the simulation result. All those things we are directly obtained from that uh, pork tissue. So here we are uh, working on uh, two different uh, dual band like uh, 2.4 gigahertz and 1.4 gigahertz. For that we are uh, preparing some dielectric properties of tissues that can uh, providing that mimicking gel that mimicking gels we have already that combinations based on that combinations we have some permittivity and the conductivity of loss tangents these two uh, frequency bands we are designed that antenna so based on this two designed dielectric properties of tissues we have concentrated on 1.4 gigahertz wmts band and 2.45 gigahertz size band so these are all the unlicensed frequency bands available for implantable antenna like uh, Medical implantable communication system. This MIX band, which is used in the frequency range of 402 to 405 MHz frequency, that can have a maximum transmitted power like a minus 16 uh, dBm, that which is accessed worldwide by MIX band. These are all the frequency bands used for implantable applications recently. So, mid radio frequency, medical radio communication frequency, they are used for 401 to 406 MHz frequency. They have a maximum transmitted power of minus 15. It is also worldwide accessible frequency. If you use the ISM band, there is a different class of ISM frequency bands, like uh, 433 to 434 MHz. It has a maximum transmitted power of 7.85. They can concentrate more on European countries. If you're using a 868 to 868.6, they're using a plus 11.85 uh, uh, maximum transmitted power. They can also concentrate it on European state. Uh, continent. So similarly, we have uh, five different uh, ISO frequency bands like uh, 902 to 928 and 2.4 to 2.48 gigahertz and 5.7 to 5.875 gigahertz. These are all the frequency bands this, uh, from the frequency ISM band. They have a maximum transmitted power. If we're increasing that power in implantable, mostly we are working on uh, low frequency in terms of gigahertz. Then only we can uh, reducing the reflection and also we can reduce the losses in the tissue so here that uh, high frequency band if you go for 5.7 to 5.875 gigahertz frequency band that can also access to worldwide but it in this case uh, in the implantable applications is not uh, effectively utilizing for the dual band because of that particular band the losses will be high the dielectric uh, losses and also we have uh, 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 damage or hazards of uh, SAR values that can all be analyzed by IS. And also we can use the wireless medical telemetry system, WMTS band. It is also low frequency. We are using 608 to 614 MHz frequency band as a maximum transmitted power of 10.8. They can be used for US standard. Similarly, 1.39 to 1.4 gigahertz have a maximum transmitted power of plus 12.22 and uh, 1.427 to 1.432 gigahertz we are using a maximum 22 uh, maximum transmitted power these are all the frequency bands are frequently used in uh, implantable antenna dc while we are designing any uh, implantable antenna we have different challenges in the first one we have a biocomfortability why we are considered the biocomfortability based so, uh, um, a return loss. Sorry, we should avoid the uh, how to say we can avoid the maximum reflection from that uh, patch antenna. That uh, super state we are placing over the patches. You, he, already you know that uh, over the uh, substrate we have a patch. In that patch, over the patch we should have some super state. So for that purpose, we are using a different uh, biocompatible materials like uh, polydimethylene silicon PDMS. We are using. Why we are uh, concentrated uh, 
PDMS compared to all other uh, polymers means we have we have to consider like higher strength. It has some uh, flexibility and dielectric strength is very high in terms of uh, 14 mahout to chemically it's a non-reactive uh, because uh, polydimethylene selections always have a, a non-reactive materials. It's chemically non-reactive and uh, it can be uh, coated over uh, substrate. That particular substrate can be coated or it can be molded. That's why we are using a polydimethylene selaxine as a biocompatible materials. It has a variable dielectric constant. It can vary from like uh, 2 to 2.8 epsilon uh, uh, with the different frequency ranges from 1 to 50 gigahertz frequency. We can access PDMS. And also we are using polymide. So this is actually is, comes under the category of uh, uh, biomaterial like uh, uh, polymide and uh, uh, polydimethylene siloxane. And also we have uh, <coughs> LCD and silicon. These are all the special properties of polymers because we have uh, combining uh, uh, different ceramic materials and different metals. They can used for implantable antenna for a long lifetime of your patient. But limitations uh, of uh, miniaturization and uh, input output uh, density of the pin category and the cost effectiveness, we move on to that. Uh, uh, um, what is that? Uh, polymide. And that, because the polymide is, uh, it is also used for uh, uh, electrical resistivity. They can also have a high electric, uh, dielectric strength. Uh, that it has a high, uh, how to say it as a bulky because of uh, uh, stiffness and also it has uh, cost cost wise it's also very high so and also we are using a silicon that also consider uh, uh, that mostly silicons are also used for uh, access uh, high resistance for biological reactions that it has a uh, easy molding and processing it mechanically it is a flexibility it has uh, and also have different uh, combinations like uh, uh, nano structures material and uh, also can possible to enhance their uh, characteristics by using a uh, silicon uh, uh, biocompatible polymers like it have uh, uh, availability of implantable at uh, particular affordable prices which is used for uh, uh, bio uh, comfortability so biocompatibility is important characteristics and important key parameter for consider to design an implantable antenna uh, for a biomaterial uh, for biomaterials to design implantable antenna, we have a different ceramic like uh, ceramic materials like uh, aluminum uh, aluminum oxide, silicon dioxide, and silicon uh, nitrate, aluminum nitrate, and uh, uh, glasses. Uh, these are ceramics available in biomaterial. We can also have metals like uh, stainless steel, titanium. And iridium, platinum. These are this can also can be biomaterial. Uh, in general, we are using the polymers for uh, biocomfortable, especially for PDMS and uh, PA and silicons. And also we have a uh, polyne PVDF that is a polyvinyl diffusions and LCP that is a uh, crystalline thermoplastic uh, thermo softening plastic LCP crystalline thermoplastic uh, substrate. They can also consider for a dielectric uh, constant. Because it has a low factor, there is a low loss factor, it doesn't affect any radio frequency performance. And next to one of the second uh, challenging is miniaturization. So to design an implantable antenna, we should reduce the size of the antenna. For miniaturization purpose, we have a different technique like a deferred ground structure, electromagnetic band cap structure, and a metamaterial structure. These structures can be used to minimizing the antenna size. In uh, deferred ground structures, we are using a different slot and different uh, uh, shape of the uh, slot we can be able to access. Because if you have any uh, deferred ground structures, we can uh, increase the gain and also enhance the bandwidth. Once if you are disturbed in that uh, ground structure, any uh, disturbance in the ground structure, they can be able to access uh, uh, increasing the bandwidth and also we can increase the gain. We can also reduce the return loss. The S11 parameter, that is, a, if you go for a parametric analysis, we have to consider the return loss characteristics, gain, radiation pattern, and the radiation efficiency. So all those things, parameters, we should consider for uh, designing any implantable antenna. And second, EBG structure, we know. So we have to create the band gap. So based on that band gap, we can reduce the size of the antenna. 
and we are used for meta materials if you go for meta material structures like uh, this uh, artificial uh, structures we can uh, this uh, different types of uh, meta material are, uh, are different for different frequency bands we can use a meta material because it is an artificial structure they can uh, designed to specify any particular electromagnetic uh, properties it, uh, it it like uh, we know that we have a different classification of meta materials like uh, epsilon negative uh, mu negative and double positive and double negative they can be realized by using a, a different structures that all the structures comes under the category of high impedance surfaces if you are using any high impedance surface means in the high impedance surface we have suppressed the surface wave and also we can enhance the radiation properties and can also uh, increase or enhance the surface wave because the polarization change can be performing by suppressing and enhancing of surface wave that polarization either it may be performing a like a co polarization and cross polarization so based on the uh, suppression of surface wave and enhance of radiation properties we can use a high impedance surface structure for uh, access the meta material and also we can consider uh, <coughs> Uh, restricted power incident so that uh, amount of power can be restricted in the particular uh, applications and the particular frequency band and also we can access the low power consumption of your uh, uh, implantable antenna and finally we can uh, calculate the link budget so for communication link characteristics should be analyzed how the communication takes place from the internal or uh, inside of the human body antenna to the external devices that can be analyzed by using a link budget that can also important uh, challenges in designing the antenna so we and uh, we are working on that uh, implantable antenna so we have uh, designed one antenna with the using of roger substrate like uh, 6010 with a thickness of 0.635 we are using the uh, dielectric construct of 10.2 uh, we have the dimension of 10 cross 10 and uh, the overall uh, volume of uh, 10 cross 10 cross 1.27 so we obtain the gain of minus 12 to 22 and also minus 23 for a dual band because we are working on the dual band of uh, WM, the wireless medical telemetry system band 1.4 gigahertz and ism band of 2.45 gigahertz frequency band so this de designed mandate structure antenna we are using a ground over the ground we have placed a substrate in that ground structure we are using a full, full ground because we are not disturbing any in that full ground without affecting that uh, without disturbing the without disturbing the ground we can obtain the dual band in uh, meander structure antenna the can is very compact and very small size of uh, 10 cross 10 and also uh, roger material the same roger 6010 materials can be uh, act as a super state can be placed as a super state for biocompatibility biocompatibility is a important a role to play to minimize the re reflection from our antenna this is actually measured research we are obtained the measured result for uh, uh, prepare, prepare, preparation of the mimicking gel for 1.4 uh, gigahertz frequency band and a 2.4 gigahertz frequency band. And this is in a feeding we are using. Uh, different feeding structures are available. Mostly implantable antenna they are used for uh, here. Here we are trying a, a coaxial feed. So in that coaxial feed we are obtained uh, the maximum gain and we are obtained the maximum return loss and we get the maximum radiation. In density also this is in a radiation box here we are choosing a skin phantom we have prepared the skin phantom the size of uh, 100 cross 100 cross 50 and we are placing that uh, antenna with the depth of uh, 4 mm because of depth of uh, uh, placing that antenna depth of placing antenna is also most important for you once if you are increasing the depth of uh, penetration or depth of placement in your antenna is getting a higher radiation and by using this uh, our designed antenna we are analyzing a uh, sar that is a specific absorption rate we know that uh, sar is uh, uh, assigned or controlled by the uh, different uh, countries so by access the sar values we can uh, use uh, actually sar is a specific absorption rate it is used to uh, measure the rate at the amount of energy can be absorbed per unit mass that is the sar they can uh, expose it to the uh, electromagnetic field uh, they can also absorb some form of energy by using average either by using a uh, whole uh, like a whole body uh, volume or a small sample volumes if you are taking any sample we can uh, calculate the sar values here 
we have a two different standards i have designed a two different uh, i have calculated or measured the two different standards of scr uh, here uh, we know that uh, ieee standard of uh, us and european standard with the 1 gram tissue model and the 10 gram tissue models in first case we are using ieee standard of c95 199009 the year of 199 2099 it has a 1 gram average scr value it is comes under a us standard it has the maximum is of maximum value limit of 1.6 watts per kilogram if you go for european standards they are using a 10 gram tissue model they have obtained the scr values of less than 2 watts per kilogram this two is most important once if you are calculating the scr values we should consider the electrical conductivity and also we can consider the volume of samples how much amount of sample we are going to take either whole body we are taking or any particular small sample value we are taking so that can be analyzed by using uh, that can categorized by using r of energy emission standard that is because uh, these two standards can be uh, considered for uh, um, uh, patient safety because the safety factor is most important uh, being safe and freedom from the hazards are really dangerous that's why we are using the safety factor uh, process in our uh, sar analysis we are designed uh, dual band antenna so for that design dual band antenna we are uh, calculate the scr values using the skin tissue model we are uh, satisfying that uh, us standard as well as in european standard within that uh, 1.6 watts per kilogram and also 2 watts per kilogram we are obtain the values the uh, threshold always selected it, it defines like uh, hazard values it direct uh, Uh, selection of that uh, uh, fab field polarization so if you take any fab field polarization it has some uh, safety factor affect affections that can be analyzed by using scr so after completing all all those things we are applying for uh, computational electromagnetic so in this case we have a uh, three major uh, computational electromagnetic field for uh, designed antenna we plant up using fddt and method of movement and finite element method this three is mostly uh, important or mostly used to analyze the uh, computational electromagnetic signals once this is an anal analytical purpose we are uh, performing this uh, computational electromagnetics here yeah, because it is uh, performing like differentially differential equation and integral equations and also we are using for vector models they have a, they are working in both the time domain as well as in frequency domain by using the time and frequency domain they can categorize into computational electromagnetic structure so this uh, this three out of these three we can apply is finite element method for hfs software remaining we can access in a cst software also i have collected some uh, resulted uh, sample or reference paper here in this in this structure they are used a miniaturized novel shaped dual band antenna for implantable applications they are using the substrate of a rogers ultralon substrate the thickness of uh, 0.1 mm and also they having dimensions like 7 cross 7.2 cross 0.2 is very uh, thin and very small size of a miniaturized novel shaped antenna they can obtain a, a dual band like 9022 928 megahertz frequency and 2.4 to 2.48 this is mainly concentrated uh, they are uh, using a shorting pins and also they can used for uh, deferred ground structures like a slot and also they are used for uh, Uh, flower shaped uh, infrastructure because of reducing the size they can obtain the particular uh, and second one this is a design and analysis of compact size multi band spiral shaped implantable antenna for scalp implantations they can uh, mainly concentrated for uh, leadless pacemaker applications so in this case they are using a multi band they are spiral shaped structures they are using like a uh, mandel spiral shaped structures they are used for scalp implantations and the leadless pacemaker applications they can also considered for multi band like 402 mhz and 433 mhz and 2.4 mhz and midfield of 1.5 gigahertz frequency they are used and also they are used on another miniaturized dual band implantable antenna system for medical applications here also they are used a roger ultralon substrate they are using a different slot structure like a t shaped slot are embedded on the radiating patch and the hexagonal shaped and four t shaped slots they are introduced to obtain that uh, dual band uh, like a point, uh, 0.9 frequency uh, 915 mhz frequency and 2.45 gigahertz frequency they can used also for uh, scalp implantation with the ultra miniaturized size they can uh, also implemented for intracranial pressure monitoring systems they have a size of 7 cross 7 
and also get the satisfying the SAR values of one gram and the 10 gram values. And similarly, they are using a meta material loaded compact high gain dual band circularly polarized antenna. Once if the antenna is satisfying the axial ratio, that is circularly polarized means that circularly polarized antenna is always maintaining a minus 3 dB gain. So that is a threshold values. In that within the minus 3 dB, if you are getting that act as a circularly polarized. Once if the antenna is circularly polarized means that axial ratio characteristic should be analyzed. In this paper, they are concentrated more on axial ratio and circularly polarized. They can obtain the frequency of 915 and 2.45 gigahertz. Mostly they are working on the dual band frequency applications. Here also they are using a wide band circularly polarized implantable patch antenna. And also they are uh, designed for uh, satisfying the condition of 1 gram and 10 gram tissue models. They are using the substrate of 3010 Roger substrate. So instead of uh, FR4 substrate, they are using a Roger substrate for biocompatibility. And also they are uh, concentrated for Roger substrate to flexible uh, characteristics also. This is an optimum band epsilon shaped miniaturized implantable antenna for telemetry applications. We have discussed already telemetry applications. They can mutually share the information from the downlink to the downlink that is a external devices to the patient and the patient to the external devices. For that, they are designed at antenna of 1.4 gigahertz and 2.45 gigahertz frequency ranges. They are using a epsilon shaped miniaturized banded line antennas. They can also obtain the uh, specified or uh, provided SAR values of 1 gram and 10 gram models. And this one is also uh, like a dual band circularly implantable antenna for biomedical applications. They can obtain the maximum gain and low. And also the uh, they can use uh, tissue models. They can uh, design the structure of uh, circular implantable. They satisfy the MIX band and ISM band. So they are, most of the implantable antenna designs are concentrated on Roger substrate. With the high dielectric uh, with the high dielectric constant, the proposed antenna they have uh, peak gain values and uh, getting the dual band frequencies. Uh, that's it about. Thank you for this opportunity. If you have any queries, just to use it. Thank you, sir. Participants, uh, if you have any query, you can uh, mute and you can ask directly, or you can put it in chat box. Okay, I believe that there is no question from participant side. Uh, thank you, sir, for giving a wonderful session. Uh, covered uh, many challenges uh, that can come uh, when you are designing a, a biomedical antenna. So thank you for giving a valuable session. Hope we'll have uh, further sessions in future. Thank you, sir. Once again, from Malaba subsection. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving this opportunity, sir. Thank you. For okay. Convey my regards to Dr. Kathy Jay. Sure, sir. I will convey. Sir. Thank sure. you. Sure. Thank you. Sir. Shall I leave, sir? Yeah, yeah, you can do. You can do. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Participants, you can uh, fill the feedbacks uh, link for availing the certificates.